Hello and welcome to Tyrannus Gaming. Today we'll be discussing Valkyr, also known as the Black Cat, and a victim of Alan V's Zonica program. We'll be utilizing 20 times Rogue Culverin. It will be Steel Path. Yeah, it will be paused so I can explain what's going on. And the enemy level will be 140. Let's discuss Valkyr's two passive abilities. If she happens to be knocked down, she'll recover 50% faster, like a proper cat should. And, if you attempt to do a superhero landing, she will absolutely refuse, as she's an anti-hero, not a hero. That is what I'm referring to. She is incapable of hard landings, so don't plan around it. This is her number one ability. Also known as Harpoon, you can use it to get around, like your black cat. And as you can see, if you try firing Harpoon at surfaces, such as statues, or the air, you will not in fact be able to fly around like Spider-Man. As Black Cat is a more realistic superhero, you actually need to attach the harpoon to something physical to actually use it. Now let's go ahead and discuss the second part of Harpoon and the most fascinating and fun aspect of it. As you can see, you can simply hurl everyone around without any regard to their actual safety. This is the Warframe roller coaster ride, and it is the most fun that these little robots have ever had in their entire lives. However, if you haven't noticed, the multiplier in front of our harpoon went from 2 to 4. This means that we did, in fact, 2 times and 4 times damage. It is slash damage, but it does not do any slash proc, so it's effectively useless against anything that's not low level. And, the best part is... Consecutive uses like this also conserves energy, allowing you to deploy it many different times, because again, you're supposed to use it to get around like Black Cat. Now let's go and discuss our number two. First, let me demonstrate what my melee does, and then I'll explain what Warcry does. As you can see, that is my melee attack. And this is important because Warcry increases attack speed, slows the enemy down, and increases my armor, which makes us all really good for melee. Now, I can hear some of you skeptics asking, well, if Warcry is so good, how come the other Culverin died in a few hits with half a health bar, as opposed to what happened now? And this is where I point out that these Culverins actually have weak points. This little canister right here, the electricity proc gets smacked into, causing it to detonate. If you shoot those weak points, you can cause an overly powerful Steel Path Culverin to die very quickly with even a stock Brighton. Let's go ahead and get rid of this interloper that shouldn't be in my home. And that is how you kill a level 140 Steel Path Culverin with very little effort. Now let's discuss Valkyr's number 3 ability. Also known as Paralysis, it pretty much does what it says on the doorstep. Paralysis takes 33% of your shields and scales it to impact damage, but this is not what we're after. We're actually after the Paralysis effect. 
And as we say, and as we say here at Tyrannus Gaming, if the enemy is paralyzed and cannot fight back, this is an enemy that is paralyzed and can't fight back. And if it can't fight back, this means you have absolute impunity in order to do as much damage to them as you want. Now let's discuss her number four, also known as Hysteria. If you look at the top right, you'll notice that our health bar is gray, and that means we are literally immortal. And if you happen to notice the percentage counting up at the top right, this is a scalable debuff. If you look at the bottom right, our energy is decreasing at an exponential rate, and this is because we are now consuming 50% more energy per second. And once it reaches 100%, we will in fact have 100% energy drain per second. This is not something you necessarily want, so I'd advise using Hysteria and then running from the enemy like Absolute Madman. The reason is, pay attention to the top right and you'll see the number zero. That zero up there indicates the amount of damage we've taken. Do you see the orange ring over there? If an enemy deals damage to you, and they happen to be within this ring, once it's disabled, that'll count as damage toward us, killing us instantly. Yes, this is an ability that is designed to kill you. However, I'd be remiss to point out that you have absolute immortality during this duration, and you can decrease the size of the ring by simply killing stuff while Hysteria is enabled. As you can see, if we had delayed any longer and we had been shot, we would have died before we killed the last Culvern. And as you can tell, I'm not very good at melee, so sue me. Now this is the part where I absolutely lay waste to Valkyr's abilities. The reason is, is that her number 4 has something known as an Exalted Weapon. Exalted Weapons are abilities, not weapons, and therefore can use all the Archon mods and utilize everything that they say. Because Archon Continuity does not work on Saren's Toxic Lash, because the toxin is applied to your actual weapon, and doesn't actually count as an ability. However, if you use a Toxin mod on an Exalted weapon, such as Valkyr's Talons, it will be able to proc Archon Continuity, causing your Toxin procs to do Corrosive. And while this sounds absolutely amazing, I'm going to point out that Immortality is the trade-off, as a normal melee weapon is exponentially more powerful now after Whispers in the Walls was released thanks to the new Arcanes. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, allow me to demonstrate. As it stands right now, Hysteria is a horrible liability to any and all builds that Valkyr has currently. Unless you're playing Steel Pass Circuit, I would not advise relying on Hysteria, but taking advantage of Valkyr's number 1, 2, and 3 abilities to do damage control and take advantage of the new melee builds. And unlike normal videos, I'm actually going to show you what my melee looks like. And yes, if you use Harpoon wrong, you will slide across the floor and basically get yourself killed as you try to recover, just like a normal cat on linoleum floors. This is what Valkyr's Talons look like. And you may be saying, hey Tyrannus, where's Blood Rush and all the other overly effective mods currently that you could be using for status chance and others? And I'm going to point out that Valkyr's Talons do not actually do this amount of damage. 
This is because of the new Archon shards. But, thanks to my current build, the damage difference also affects my Kogake Prime as much as it does Valkyr's Prime's talons. Let's go ahead and check for Blood Rush. Oh no, it's not available. Such mods are also not available, like they are on the Kogake Prime and other such melees. These mods I'm referring to are Weeping Wounds, and as we gain combo counter, this means as we smack the enemy with a stick, and we repeat this process over and over, our combo counter on the bottom right will go up to 12. This means you will have 12 times 40% or 480% status chance added to your melee, which just simply makes Kogake Prime a lot better than Valkyr's Talons. Then we have Blood Rush, which is 40% critical chance, which is also a 480% boost to critical chance. This means we can get critical chance to reliably proc, unlike if we use the Umbra mods of Sacrificial Steel, which would put this critical chance up to a respectable point, but Blood Rush can easily dwarf it, as 480% is vastly superior to 200%. And this gets even funnier when you consider that Gladiator Might and other such mods can increase an additional 60% critical chance which stacks with blood rush this means that at some point at 12 times combo you can essentially do permanent critical chance small hits and likely do orange or maybe red depending on your melee weapon this may not seem like much but i want to point out that electricity scales and it will spread through a crowd and stun lock them and as we say here at tyrannus gaming if the enemy is stun locked this is called crowd control they will not be able to fight back because they are too busy being electrocuted now you may be asking yourself, but Tyrannus, electricity procs don't spread very well, and even though you're stun locking everything directly in front of you, wouldn't that basically be a problem? Because couldn't stuff within 20 meters or within the immediate room stun lock you and kill you while you're too busy punching a guy to death? And I will tell you, dear viewer, you are absolutely wrong, because again, we have another issue. Take a look at Valkyr Prime Talents. And you'll notice that it's missing something vital that was given to the new update. While Mentor's Legacy here is available on Valkyr Prime's Talons, and a heavy attack from Valkyr's Talons will cause enemies to become lifted, which means they can't fight back, which is itself a very good thing. Let's go ahead and check the Kogake Prime. While the Kogake and other such weapons cannot stunlock people, by simply lifting them with a heavy attack like Valkyr's Talons can, we trade that off with melee influence. On melee electricity status, 20% chance for elemental melee status effects to apply to enemies within 20 meters for 18 seconds. This means that every time you punch something, let's assume we have a 100% status due to weeping wounds, this means every hit has a 20% chance to spread your electricity proc to everyone within 20 meters and for those of you that don't understand how big 20 meters is it is 60 feet or roughly the blast radius of a 500 pound jdam this means that you can effectively turn into a mini wmd by simply utilizing the melee influence mod and this gets even funnier if you decide to stack viral and utilize electricity to spread it out and stun lock them and cause the viral to do 325% bonus damage to anything without armor. Utilizing any Warframe that happens to be able to proc corrosive on your weapons on top of this, let alone toxin, such as a certain walking WMD known as Saren, you can simply armor strip and slaughter everything in a room before they even realize what the hell happened. But, I'm Valkyr, not Saren, and that witch can go and die. I hope you all had a wonderful day, and I hope you all learned something new. If I happen to play my sets wrong, you can simply tell me how I can better utilize my abilities, or what mods I can add, to better make my build, well, better. Just don't play with electricity too much, kids, because as you can see, you might lose part of your head. Have a good day.